All right, so now let's see. Any more exponential function equations besides the graph? We'll probably do the graph next. Okay, we'll do the graph. Number 11. This is part two of the test review for exponents. The graph shown represents a population of bacteria over time. Which of the following is not a true statement? The initial population of back, um, sorry, the initial population was about 50. If you get really, really, really close, remember where the initial population is found? Mm -hmm. On which axis? The y axis. So if you look very, very, very closely, you will see that if this is 200, this is 100, and halfway through is 50. So that one looks like this is actually true. The population increased by 100 each hour. So in order to see if the population increased by 100 each hour, you might have to make yourself a table. So I'm just going to leave that one as like a maybe, because we know we're looking for the one that's not true. So it can't be A because A is true. The population doubled every hour. I would have to make a table so I can make sure. So I'm just going to leave that one as a maybe for now. The population at six hours would be about 3,200 bacteria. All right, let's go ahead and make a table. So 0, 50 would be the first one. Then at the 1 would be 100. Then at the 2 would be 200. Then at the 3 would be 400, then at the 4 would be 800. This table really helped me. I should have made the table before I even started the problem. Because if you look, it is doubling each time. So the population doubled every hour, that is true. We're not looking for a true, we're looking for a false. B says the population increased by 100 each hour. That means for every hour it increased by 100. Yeah, that's the one that's false. Because the population at six hours, if I kept going, I could find the population at six hours if I just keep doing what in my table? <laughs> Timesing by two. Timesing by two. Doubling each hour. So when you see this problem on the test, if you make a table, I will give you extra credit. If you make a table to help you, I will give you extra credit for this one. All right, let's continue. Let's look at number 12. So for number 12, it says, which of the following is a geometric sequence with a common ratio of 1 over 4? Remember how to find the common ratio? We do that backwards thing, dividing, but not dividing forwards, dividing backwards. So we're looking at each of these, 1.5 divided by 6, or 6 divided by 24, 24 divided by 96. You have to try all of them. All right, so for A, 1.5 divided by 6, 6 divided by 24, 24 divided by 96. See, if all of, if all of those equal point, I'm sorry, 1 over 4, which is also 0.25, that's your answer. If not, then you need to go to B, bless you. And be careful with this in your calculator because this is 6.5, which we don't really use mixed numbers. So that's like 6.5 divided by... 4.75. We want to make sure that would be 1 over 4. Or is it 4.75 divided by 7? Check both of those to see if it equals 1 over 4 or 0.25. If it's not, same little backwards division here. 64 divided by 16. What does that equal? 16 divided by 4. What does that equal? 4 divided by 1. What does that equal? Does it equal this or this? I can see it's not C. That's the easiest one for me because 16 divided by 4 is 4. 4 divided by 1 is 4, so it can't be C. Then this one, they have some negatives in there. So 16 divided by negative 4, then negative 4 divided by 4. These are all even different rates, ratios, should I say. So yeah, they're all different for this one, because that would be negative 4, that would be negative 1, that would be 1 over 4. They need to all be 1 over 4. So you find the answer by doing the first two calculations. We already did 13. We already did oh, 14, 14. So number 14, the population of a town of 3,000 increases by 7% every year over the next three years. 
if the domain of 0, 1, 2, 3 for this situation represents the years that the town's population was recorded, what is the range of the population values? This is a domain and range like word problem. And we know that it has to start with what? The initial value is 3,000. And this is even help on your star. When you see a word problem and it asks you for either domain or range, that's when you need to make a table so it can help you. Because what does it give you? The domain or the range? It gives you the domain. So if it gives you the domain, please don't choose the answer. If you see, oh, that's 0 to 3, don't choose that one because they gave that to you. They're asking you what numbers go here. To find what numbers go here, you need to either write an equation for it, or you can um, just, oh, well, 7%, that's going to be a little difficult. So yes. So on your test for extra credit, make sure you draw that table and write the equation. So this equation will be y equals 3,000 times 7 to the x, right? No, this is a percentage, and a percentage does not directly calculate to a, a rate. So what do you do with the 7%? First, you need to move the what? How many times? Twice. Once you move it twice, there's going to be a space that you need to fill with that zero. So when you write the equation, it should be a 1.07 because it is increasing. So you got to add that one to the power of x. So when you put this equation in the calculator, fill in your blanks and find your answer, OK? Remember, this was a trick. Just because it says 7% means you sh the one you see with the 7, cross it out. That's not an answer. They want to trick the people that are sleeping. They want to trick the people that don't follow directions, all right? So number 14. You're going to have to put this in the calculator and find who's paired up with 0, 1, 2, and 3. That's going to be your range. So that's the second extra credit. That was the first extra credit. And the other one was growth of DKH. We're still going here. Let's move it along here. What is the asymptote of the function? Asymptote, well, look at it. The dinosaur's tail, that's like the asymptote. It looks like it's touching the x-axis. So the asymptote is where does it look like it's touching? The x-axis. What's another name for x-axis? Y equals zero. What is the range of this function? So the range of this function deals with the y values or the f of x values. So we need to be looking on the y-axis. The highest number is right here. There's no arrow, so it's not going to go higher than that, which it looks like 32. So the highest equals 32. And the lowest, I mean, honestly, I can't really tell if that's going to keep going or if the asymptote is right here at the 5. But I would say that since we're, this is Algebra 1, it is going to keep going. So the lowest is equal to 0 because that's probably going to keep going down here. So the range would be um, the lowest number goes on this side, the highest on this side. And I would put that equal to in the 32 because that is not going to go higher. It could be exactly 32, but not higher. Number 19, we talked about um, if you have a table, the table model, the table below models the number of desktop computers sold per year at a local technology store. Which exponential regression is used to determine a function for this data? So we need to be looking at which of these goes with these. You can start putting all of these in the calculator. But remember, this x minus 1, this is only for what type of? This is only for a geometric sequence. It can only be B or C. It can only be A, B, or D. It can't be C because when you see the x minus 1 pop up, that's for geometric sequences. This is not a sequence. If it said, oh, the sequence is. 975-633-411. If that was the sequence, it would be C. But it's not a sequence. This is like a, it's an exponential function. So if you want to find the rate, remember how to calculate the rate is the same way we calculate the geometric ratio. 
267 divided by 411. 411 divided by 633. 633 divided by 975. Those should all be the same, and that would give you the rate. And then the other thing you need to be looking for is the y-intercept, because either this, this, or this should be the y-intercept. These three should be the y-intercept. However, look at your table. Where's the y-intercept? y-intercept is always paired up with the x equals 0. So if it's paired up with the x equals 0, the y-intercept, and the rate should have been 0.65. Look at your table, actually. This table is it increasing or decreasing. It's a DK table, so that's good to know. That could have helped you eliminate D, because this is growth. <coughs> All right. So now it says, using the table of values in the above problem, what will be the number of computers sold after 10 years? So you need to take your answer from the above one, which is this. Put it in the calculator and be looking for where your x equals 10. And that's going to be your answer. Number 21, which graph represents an exponential function with an initial value of 1 and a rate of growth? Here's some more extra credit. Write down whether the table is growth or decay for extra credit. Write down whether it's growth or decay. This one is growth. This one is growth. This one is decay. This one, this ain't even an exponential. This is linear. So we know it could either be C or D. So we're looking for the initial value to be at 1. And the initial value is found on the y-axis. So which one of these has an initial value of 1, which is on the y-axis? You see the y-axis? Where does it touch the 1? All right. For number 22, same thing here. you got to find the rate, which means you got to do your backwards dividing. Dividing, starting down here with 1024 divided by 128, then 128 divided by 16, and also, you can do 16 divided by 2. Same thing here. 351 divided by 117. 117 divided by 39. 39 divided by 13. If all those are equal, that is your rate of growth or rate of decay. If they're not equal, that means it's not even an exponential function. Number 23 goes back to geometric sequences. And for, remember, for geometric sequences, when we have our equation, we have our T1, which is the first term, times the rate to the power of x minus 1. So read the question. What is the T1? The T1 is the, the first number in the sequence, the first term. So T1 is the first term, and the rate is what? Or the common ratio, I should be calling it common ratio, is 3 to the x minus 1. No tricks for that one. And I think that might be L number 8. Number 8 was with that one problem that we went over the other day, and I said, hey, write it, expand it, then write it simplified so it can help you eliminate the wrong answer choices. So if you expand it, there's two x's on top and five x's on bottom. It says which of the following is not equivalent. If you go ahead and simplify it, that's going to be x2 minus 5, because it's a division problem, which is x to the negative 3, which is the same thing as 1 over x to the third. So you got to be careful with your answer choice here. 1 over x to the third can also be written as a 1 over how many x's at the bottom? x, x, and x. So this is the same thing as 1 on top, x, x, x on the bottom. This right here is 1 over x to the third, which is that one. This one here is x to the third. But 
the equivalent answer was x to the negative 3. So the one that's not equal is that one. That one's tricky.